to a home run hitter who's in a slump, he'll tell you that if he could get one solid hit, just one, he'd snap out of it. But that first hit isn't easy when you're in a slump. Talk to a 190 average bowler who hasn't rolled a strike in three games. He'll tell you that if he could just get that first strike, he'd get out of the slump and back in that pocket. But it's not easy when you're in a slump. Or talk to an automobile salesman who's in a slump, a fellow who hasn't sold a car in more days than he likes to think about. He'll tell you too that if he could just make that first sale, his run of bad luck would be broken. But again, it's easier said than done when you're in a slump. The trouble is, if you go too long without connecting, you get into a frame of mind where you think you never will. Lose your self-confidence and your half lick before you start. So what's the answer? Slogans, never say die, try, try again. Maybe they're all right as far as they go, but they don't go very far unless you back them up with action. What sort of action? Well, Many salesmen have found that the action of selling is the answer. They actually sell themselves back into a confident frame of mind. They make these three sales for confidence. First, sell yourself on yourself. Second, sell yourself on your dealership. And third, sell yourself to one of your present customers. To illustrate this idea, Let's consider the case of Joe McDonald, Chrysler Plymouth salesman. Now, this yarn is pure fiction, but the formula it illustrates has been tried many times, and nine times out of ten, it works. Here's Joe at six in the morning, wishing he'd stayed in bed. He's worried about the sales he hasn't been making. Wonder if I'll be able to sell Tom Jenkins when I give him this demonstration this morning. Oh, I doubt it, the way my luck's been going. Wish somebody'd tell me what's wrong. Do you mean that, Joe? If you do, here's a tip. You're not making the first three sales of the day every day. First three sales? Hey, what is this? Boy, I must be starting to talk to myself. For a minute, I thought... Yeah, the first three sales, Joe. Now, don't get excited. There's nobody here but you. I'm your other self, your alter ego. Al who? Alter ego? Alter ego, but that's all right. Just call me Al. I guess I'm still asleep. Okay, so I'm dreaming. What's this uh, first three sales of the day business? The first one, Joe, is selling yourself to yourself. You can do that every morning while you're shaving and dressing. And just how do I go about doing that? Features and benefits, Joe. Features and benefits. Take a look at yourself. Hair trimmed as usual, fresh shave. Things like that are features, Joe. Shoes shine, suit pressed, and it's second nature with you to keep them that way. Maybe that's why you've lost sight of the benefit, which is your prospect's favorable reaction to your good appearance. It's a benefit you haven't thought about lately, Joe, but it's there just the same. Now, here's another thing you ought to think about, Joe. Have you ever considered whether you're in the right field? Is there anything you'd rather do than sell? Are you kidding? Do you see this? It's me, 20 years ago. I started selling the day I got my first newspaper route. I didn't peddle papers, I sold them. I used to show people what my paper had that the competition didn't offer. Best political coverage, more syndicated columnists. I used to tell people about it. What I mean, Al, is that I'm the type of salesman who knows his product, sells its benefits. And I've studied people all my life, too. I know how to adapt my sales pitch to the prospect. Let me tell you. Are you nearly ready, Joe? What? Oh, oh, yes, dear. Be right there. Just coffee, dear. Has it ever occurred to you, sweetheart, that you're married to one of the best automobile salesmen in town? Well, naturally. You don't think I married you for your looks, do you? In fact, darling, I was thinking a minute ago that maybe the reason I've had this run of bad luck lately is that I've outgrown. Uh... Well, never mind. I'll see you later, dear. I want to get to the place early and have a look around. Yeah, 
Now, I know I'm a good salesman, darn good. But maybe, you know, maybe the reason I'm having this run of bad luck is that I'm limited here. Maybe I've outgrown this place. It's not the biggest dealership in the world by any means. You used to think it was the best, though, Joe. Hey, are you here again? I thought you were a, a what do you call it, a figment of my imagination. I'm as real as you are, Joe. I'm your other self, remember? You might say, Joe, that I'm a state of mind or an attitude. I'm the confident attitude you had just three weeks ago this morning. It was just before lunch, remember? You just sold two cars, a New Yorker and a Windsor Deluxe. And you were sitting right there where you are now, thinking that this dealership might not be the biggest in town, but that it was the best. That's what makes me wonder just what it is you've outgrown. What do you say we ask the operator to turn the record and then you can get this off your chest? Now, just what is it you've outgrown, Joe? Your product, maybe? Chrysler automobiles? Have you lost your marbles, Al? Why, we've got a line here that I can sell against Cadillac and Lincoln and right down through cars like Pontiac and Mercury. And let me tell you something else. You've never seen such a sales-minded bunch as we've got around here. We train for selling, Al. We've got high-powered advertising, films, bulletins, Everything we need to help us handle any type of prospect you could name. Whether he's interested in performance, luxury, comfort, or what. Sure, other dealerships have sales aids too, but what I'm talking about, we use them. We're learning all the time. As I look back, that training has paid off, and I expect it'll keep right on paying off. Another thing. We've got a nice bunch of people here, Al. Take Susie over there. She's our stenographer. She knows the paperwork of this business better than anyone in the place. She's got brains as well as good looks. She's always pleasant to the customers, too. You think that's not important? It is to me, Al, especially when they're my customers. And talking about people that are easy to get along with, you ought to meet Steve Hansen, too. He's our service manager. And Steve knows his stuff, too. Once in a while, Al, I've had a customer come in here with a beef about his car. What I usually do is take him out and introduce him to Steve. Steve's a great diplomat, but what's more important, he knows his automobiles. He knows what makes them go, and he knows what makes them stop going. And when they stop going, Steve knows exactly what to do, how to do it, and how to get it done on time. Things like that, Al, are important to a salesman. What it amounts to is I've got a whole gang of people backing me up, helping me to keep my customers happy. Hmm. And you were talking about needing a change of scene. What's that, Al? Uh, I just said you ought to be able to make a nice piece of change out of those clean used cars. Like to take a look out there, Al? Frankly, we're usually in a better trading position than our competitors, even when the used car market is tough. Take this Windsor here, for instance. The service department just got through with it last night, and it's practically like a brand new... Good morning, Joe. Oh, hello, boss. Hey, I must be hearing things. Thought you had company. Guess I was thinking out loud. Yeah, I'll tell you what I was thinking, boss. This afternoon... I'm going to start working on this 1953 Windsor. I just remembered a fellow over on the west side who likes to get around that first year's depreciation. His name's Parker, you remember him. But first, this morning, I'm going to give Tom Jenkins the demonstration of his life in a New Yorker deluxe four-door sedan. He was talking Buick yesterday, but I kind of think I can swing him over. Boy, you sound confident this morning. Well, that's swell. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Oh, hi, Al. Hello, Joe. Feeling pretty good now, aren't you? As a matter of fact, I am, Al. Your ideas have worked fine so far. So now I'm going to see if I can make that third sale. Selling myself to one of my present customers. Here it is. Fremont. 
two, seven, three, one, five. I guess it is important, Al. Let your customers know you're interested in them after the sale. You sell yourself, but you buy something, too. You buy the customer's goodwill. Well, what do you know? All I said was, how are you? How's the family? How's the car? And... Good morning, Joe. Oh, uh, hi, Susie. Did you see? Oh, never mind. But do you know who I was talking to just now? <laughs> well, the way you were exchanging compliments, it must have been your long-lost brother. Just a sociable phone call to a valued client, Susie. And he sounded mighty pleased to hear from me. <laughs> he couldn't get over the fact that I wasn't trying to sell him anything. Not only that, he seemed to be happy to have a chance to talk about his car, how his wife and kids like it. Yes, maybe I did sell him something after all. Come on, Susie, and I'll buy you some coffee and donuts. I just made my first three sales of the day. Yes, you, like every salesman, have known the experience of being in a personal sales slump. It can happen even when business conditions are good. Other salesmen may be connecting, but for you, it's no sale day after day. And as the days go by, you may begin to wonder whether you'll ever sell another automobile. But if there's one thing you are sure of, it's this. That if you could just make that first sale, you'd get back all your confidence. To make that first sale easier, you can and should make three sales for confidence. But better than wait until your personal sales slump overtakes you, why not make those three first sales of the day every day? The first thing every morning. Take stock of yourself, of your personal qualities, your abilities. You'll probably find when you add them all up that you're a much better salesman than you were last year. And that's your first sale for confidence, selling yourself on yourself. Next, take a good hard look at your dealership. Not only its buildings and equipment, but the people in it the people you work with. Do this and it will come to you that they're all on your team and that it's a pretty good team to be on. And so you'll have made your second sale for confidence. And last, call up one of your present owners. You'll find usually that he appreciates your interest in him, his family, and in the car he bought from you. You'll find that your personal interest in him adds to his confidence in you. And that it will add to your confidence in yourself. And so you'll have made your third sale for confidence. So here they are again, the first three sales of the day. Sell yourself on yourself. Sell yourself on your dealership. Sell yourself to one of your present customers. Try it. You'll find that it's a formula that helps you to sell automobiles.